the agenda Ron, other than adding Mary? Uh, no. Okay. No change. Mary, did I see that you were online? Uh, yes, I'm here. Yes, I can't really see you. I've got a big, big gold budget thing in my frame, but that's fine. I can. <laughs> I'm here. That, yes, that'll be the first agenda item. Yeah. Okay. So, so shall I speak? Oh yeah, that's under public comment, but that's our discussion. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I just popped on because I I texted Brian this afternoon to ask him what had happened to my letter to you guys, a request to talk about um, the, the process, I guess, of uh, DRB appeals and how that gets handled by the select board. And then he told me he had COVID and he was very unwell and so, so he wasn't going to be at the meeting. So I thought I'd just pop on and see um, if you guys had thought about a way we might have the conversation that I was asking to have. Yes, Brian, Brian, let me know that you wanted to to speak tonight, Mary, but I what I'm guess you want to give us some details. Um, sure, yeah, I, I, I sent you guys all an email. Um, I don't know, it was maybe two or three weeks ago. Um, oh, sorry, who am I speaking to? Who's chairing? I can't really see you. Sorry, it's Chastity. Oh, yeah. Hi, thanks. Um, yeah, just saying that that I heard from Ron that that you uh, settled the um, uh, the appeal of a, a DRB decision and changed the terms of the permit in a certain way. And uh, it was just interesting to me that you chose to do that. And I was I guess I wanted to understand a bit more. I mean, about what the process is that you go through and how you decided to do that. And not because, um, well, I think, I think what I'd say is in this particular instance, it doesn't matter. It's water under the bridge. Um, but in terms of understanding what our role is as a DRB, I mean, we had like five or six hearings for that permit. There was quite a lot of deliberation and, I'm sure you had good reasons to decide what you did, um, but I was just wanting to explore that because maybe I there's something that the DRB needs to understand better about our decisions or uh, um, yeah, maybe there's a way to make it clearer to people why you decide a certain way, not you know, to settle a, a, a an appeal as opposed to defend it in court. That was what I wanted to discuss in my email to you was, uh, about whether or not it was appropriate, given that our deliberations were in um, private and your deliberations on a, a, a court appeal were also in private, whether, I don't know, it was appropriate to do that in a deliberative session or in the open. I don't really know. But there were a couple of DRB members who followed up on my email and said they wanted to be part of the conversation just to understand that as well. So, uh, that's what I'm following up on. Did, did we have a meeting and the DRB member came and told us about this claim and said that there was one open item and he felt that it was not worth chasing? Was that something different, Ron, when he came to talk to us at that meeting? Was that a different issue? No. No, no it was the same one. There was a... Uh... The DRB board member. Yes. Yeah, that was Mac. Mac Teal appeared at the DRB meeting. Because the DRB board, that we had this appeal, we had the conversation. Mac Teal came, representative of the DRB board, told us that we should not. We should not. Told you, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. What did you say, Matt? I, I'm Ron, correct me if I'm wrong. So, so my opinion of this, I've been here now, I've been through this, but we had the meeting with where the DRB member came represented you guys and you mac teal came represented the drb board and indicated that it was not worth taking to court if i'm wrong and we uh, that's that's how we agreed on that it's not something we go into that depth it was ron am i am i incorrect in this yeah so what happened with the mac the drb 
can be asked for comment or not. They could be asked the chair to come in or not, or the whole board can meet with the select board. The select board did want to get some insight and ask Mac Teal to come into a, I think it was an executive session type setting. And Mac provided his thoughts and the deer and the select board then had to meet themselves. I think uh, maybe even inviting the, uh, trying to schedule me with Jim Harrison as well and then the town attorney, and then they met again, I think, to decide what possibly could, you know, result from all that information that the board gathered. And that's, that, that is what happened. The select board could have just decided to do whatever they want to do without that extra effort as well. Yeah, I don't think my question, I mean, the select board can do whatever it wants. I mean, they represent the town in matters at court. But um, so that's not what I'm questioning. You you could decide anyway. My I think the thing I was interested in exploring is what the process is that you use to decide. And if if what you're saying and and two things, if you got legal advice from the town a lawyer that said this was not a, a permit worth defending, that's interesting for me to know. And the other, I think, probably the other board members to know because. You know, we spent a lot of time deliberating. There must have been five or six hearings on this thing. If we got something wrong uh, that that didn't reflect, you know, the the right decisions, we ought to understand that better and learn from it. That that's what I'm thinking. Um, alternatively, if it wasn't legal advice, but it was something else, and and you're saying that that it was on the basis of one DRB member, which is one vote of five said something, uh, then I think that might be worth discussing a little bit. If you're interested in what the DRB thinks and what our deliberations were, again, this is not about this permit because this is done. It's just using this as a kind of case study about how, if there are other appeals, because if you step back from this and just use this as an example, I mean, there were all these hearings that we had, and we deliberated and we issued in this particular case, and I'm not revealing anything about our deliberations, we issued a permit. And then the applicant came back and said they didn't like that permit. Could we reconsider? And the board reconsidered. And one of the things that was key in that reconsideration was trading one thing for another. And one of those things was the Saturday operating hours. So then the applicant said, well, they didn't like that either. And they came to you and got a, a, a different result. And it, it, it just makes you kind of wonder how the information is getting, how the information is getting transferred and what the decisions are. I mean, I, I'm not questioning if you thought it wasn't a permit that was worth defending and you came to that judgment in a way that was fair and reasonable, that's fine. But then I think it means that we on the DRB, or certainly I, speaking for myself, um, would like to understand more about that, because I thought that permit was pretty carefully considered and, and long deliberated. So that was what I wanted to discuss. I didn't mean to take up your whole meeting at it now, because I wasn't quite sure of the format we should have the discussion. But um, I think what I said to, to Brian when I raised it is, you know, we spend a lot of time doing this and making our best effort. And if all anybody has to do is, you know, go and ask the other parent, then maybe we shouldn't have a DRB. I don't, I don't mean that quite like that, but. Um, so I was curious in understanding more about it, uh, about what the process is that you choose to use and Yeah. And if maybe we should have a little more conversation about that. Yeah, well, we don't have pro a process uh, that's established in Hyde Park, primarily because we don't face many appeals. But based on this case, the only suggestion I could think of is if the select board wants to hear from the DRB, maybe they invite the DRB to a meeting and see who shows up versus you know the chairman that that might be a small tweak to answer mary's you know going forward perspective so that uh, either everybody has the opportunity or nobody nobody attends 
Can you hear me now? I hear you. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. We had some, we were having some technical difficulties over here. So we lost you for a little bit, Mary, and then you guys couldn't hear us. So I think we're back. Oh, now. sorry about that. Oh, well, no. I was just repeating myself. It was quite boring. <laughs> <laughs> well, we I think we I think we definitely heard heard the gist of it for sure. And Ron, I agree that you know the process maybe going forward is to talk more with the DRB if we do have appeals. Um, I was part of this process for this specific permit, and I thought we did our due diligence. You know, we talked with Jim, we we read the notes from the DRB. Um, you know, we did hear from one of your members, um, and I do agree. You know, we maybe we should have talked to more members. Um, so moving forward, maybe we should have a, a more defined process if this does happen again. Well, I think it would be good to know what it is, because I still am unclear how many, how many, again, it's totally your jurisdiction. You can do whatever you like and you can completely ignore the DRB. I get that. Um, but if you're trying to get, you know, people to sit on the DRB and, and do their best efforts, then, um, yeah, you, you, you know, it helps us to understand what happened. And I'm still not quite clear why, you know, Again, it was part of your deliberation why you decided it was okay to just give Saturday hours when Saturday hours were, you know, quite a specific thing that was um, part of, you know, a key part of the give and take in that um, in that permit being granted. So, or at least that was certainly my understanding of it, and I'm pretty sure it was the understanding of one or two other people having been part of the deliberations. And I can appreciate from your side, it's quite difficult because, you know, the fact that that we were at this for many months, and I mean, it, it was quite a, yeah, there was a lot of work that went into that permit. I think it was worth defending. I think it was probably, um defendable, but I didn't have the benefit of speaking to a lawyer about it. So I don't know uh, about that. So yeah, I guess I feel if I'm sitting on the on the DRB, I would I would like to have understanding. And I'm pretty sure that, I mean, this is getting a little more into the detail than we need to do at this place, but that people who participate in the hearings um also understand that that there isn't just a do-over happening in a in a settlement that that there's something else going on there i'm not being very clear on that but so that's um and the only thing i would say if this is the discussion we're having then i guess um uh, craig and elisa didn't know we were having it, so they didn't get to have their two cents. Maybe it's worth having a further discussion. I don't know. We have a DRB hearing coming up next week, and I can ask them if you're interested in, um, yeah, you I, know, having a conversation with you. Yeah, no, I think that that's a great idea that we we do all get together and have a discussion and come to you know, an agreement on what we think the process should be for both of us um, and, and work together on that. If you're open to that, maybe after the holidays, we could plan a spot on the agenda one night in January. Yeah, that'd be great. I would appreciate it just so that that you can have some understanding of, of the things that we did and tried to do right. And then if you have insights and legal advice, you decide whether that has to be done in executive session or whatever. Um, and I'll check with my fellow members um, when I see them next week, whether they, they're they interested in, in having that conversation. I certainly am. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying Mac did anything wrong. It's just that Mac is one vote on a board of five. Sure. And um, yeah, and this was a contentious permit. And I guess you... I guess you would expect it's the contentious permits that get appealed, not the ones that everybody's happy with. That's exactly right. Right. For sure. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Thank you for that. And um, I'll be in touch with Ron about trying to schedule something. And meanwhile, 
I also have not weed on the mind. And so I've asked Ron to put me on the December uh, select board for a little bit of a not weed discussion if you're up for that. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mary. Yep, good night. Okay. No other public comments. Anybody else on there? I think so. Okay, Snowmobile Club, Ron, do you have something for us on that? What was what, you cut out a little bit? What was the topic? Snowmobile Club. Oh, that's a quick one. Yeah, every year the um, I've always done this. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Every year the oh the Snowpackers Club, I think it's called, that does this area for vast. I just made a motion to let them do the 75 feet in the Garfield Road. They've done it right along for the last 10, 20 years. I'll say. Yep. Yeah, the only the good news is that they've uh, negotiated with neighbors to get off most of Garfield Road. They have a little 75 foot section well, where they still need to cross. That's not bad. No. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I think that was all of us. Okay. Just glad they come to us again, but I, I know yeah. they've done that for years. Do we have to do a 111 for that? Yeah, I'll do that with them directly. It's actually a it's actually a permission slip type thing, which is required by the um, VAS to to get approval from landowners. The permission slip it has substituted for the eleven eleven because they're not doing any work; they're just getting permission from the board. Okay. Okay. Most excitement for the evening. Woo! The highway <laughs> budget. <laughs> Yeah, Mark is going to have to go to the table. I can't, can barely hear him. He said no. I can't talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> so in this budget, we're coming for, well, looking for to get the fifth full-time guy. That we, you know, even just flagging, we don't have a, for a road project, we don't have enough staff to, to legally flag. You know, if I had two guys flag in and one guy in the escalator, one guy in the dump truck, there's my crew. So it's, it gets very tough. And there's certain times that we could do the two projects at once if we had that one in line to, to help us. And would this be CDL equipment yes. operator? Yes. Full board person, yeah. Yeah. all legit. Can you run nothing on the road with a CDL? No. Okay. <laughs> Loader, you can't. No. <clears throat> this position would we're thinking like April or immediate. Might have to be. Might have to be after July. July. We can, nice. You can well to you know advertise way before. Then we have to wait for July for the budget. Right. If accepted, because it'd be in the 2023. Right. Unless you could talk somebody in coming on board and not taking the benefits until after July 1. We've done that. I've done that. You know, guarantee him a job after July 1. You could, you know, say, hey, you're going to work here five months or whatever it is or four months without benefits. What do you think about it until July 1? Right. Because you're still paying the money. <clears throat> Can you do that? I don't know the legal part. No. Oh, uh, probably. Yeah. The what? Be an interim position and then yeah. become a permanent position July 1. Probably. We, uh, we've done that. Yeah. Regardless. Yeah. Yep. We can figure out that portion. You, you, you got some gravel crushing you know, that the 10,000 yards you're looking at crush yeah yeah well we can't we can't get anybody in here for under 10 mm -hmm. and you're pretty much the under tight it's not worth their while to, I, I don't have, have it maybe I do. the only thing <clears throat> the only thing that um in your last one for the equipment the only thing i didn't agree with i think you ought to think about trading that pickup a little quicker than eight years 
because of the problem we had last time. And you could buy them pickups, as you know, dime a dozen. Well, the pickup and the Dodge both should be looked at more than five years. You know, yeah. They're small. They work hard, especially the Dodge. Too. You don't, you don't they build hard, but they're, they're on everything. Yeah. You had eight years, eight years down there. Yeah. I would agree for those two to try to push both of those to a five year. Percent increase. You, you, no, you missed the conversation. Okay. Uh, so I, yeah. I don't really benefit. I lose the guy for a whole month. That's right. You know, I, so I, I understand that, but it's always been how do you afford to? Yeah. You no, know, yeah. it's in there though. Ron already said. Yeah, it's, it's in there. It's in there. What was it? 16,000, 16, Ron? It's a twenty percent increase yeah. on the auxiliary labor. <laughs> okay. I just want to know if it's in there or not. Yeah, it's in there. You're saying it's a twenty percent increase, and everybody's flinching at five percent. <laughs> it's in there. And you're not going to need any culverts. I've got it, so we do it every other year. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Everything else is pretty explanatory. Your increase that's more that's just the fuel or that is vehicle equipment. Is that where that is? What's that? Your proposed 2024, your fuels and oils and vehicle equipment. Is that 30,000? Is that just the obviously fuel. increase in price in yeah. fuel? I didn't know if maybe that was part of the vehicle that you were talking about. I wish we could narrow that up a lot better. Oh who knows where that is. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It is where it is. Oh, it's going there. down. Didn't you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right oh, after it goes up. Yeah. Right after right. it goes up. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Then it'll go down, it'll go up 20 cents and go down volume. That's right. How long is the extra one? What's that? How long is the extra one? I can hear you. How long is the excavator one for? Ask How long is the excavator going for? Yeah, we should be able to run that thing. No, no loan. loan. Oh, loan. I five year. Yeah. Five, five. That loan. Oh, I see what you're seeing down the bottom. Yeah, I asked Jennifer today to make sure that she spends time on those loan amounts for you know your future drafts. Those are those are close, but they're um, placeholders right now. So that's part of the reason you see the yellow highlights on the budget is the sort of work in progress that we have to keep refining as you guys make decisions or we get better information from insurance companies and those kind of things. So you didn't really go up much on your tires, thousand bucks? Yeah, you didn't really know where they're headed. They're kind of you, are you having a hard time getting them now? No. Why well, not? I ordered one the other day, two weeks, I'll have it. But two it's weeks. Because of holiday, this holiday, so we don't have two weeks. Well, they haven't had a big, big issue with them. You did greater ones last year, right? Yeah. Big expense. <clears throat> <laughs> so, if we don't hire the fifth guy, what does the budget look like? Ron? You wait, can, a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, you take, I think I did a quick math of 40 to 45,000 would come off the budget. Okay. That's seven years waiting to get him an extra man. 
I don't, <clears throat> I don't disagree with that, but with the 20% increase in the biggest line item, I don't want to make everybody else try to do 2% or 3% because it's all going here and we're hiring an extra person. And that's right. If your, <laughs> I mean, highway, crew, kind of if your highway crew here, don't go out, Susan, nobody else is going to move. <laughs> nobody else they, is going they, to move. They've gone out all these years. Okay, yeah, so well. the extra person isn't going to, or not. I'm just saying, in terms of looking at the overall amount of money, all right, and Roly, your figure is like, you know, we got to stay at 3%, we got to stay at 3%. I'm not saying I'm opposed to any of this, but to, but to do a giant jump in one place and add an additional person, I'm not opposed to. I'm just asking people to think and be realistic and thinking about the money to then ask everybody else to like do two or three percent and and then in and a then, book around their necks is well, like, well, okay. That's all. <clears throat> really, you really need that extra man up there. There's there's just no doubt about it. And most of this budget, besides that one thing, oh, yeah, it's, it's, just pretty much, it's just, you know, our hands yeah, are tied. Like yeah, exactly. It's gone up exactly. it's all. But you take, you Mark, you take, up. we need to fuel. It's you take one, one episode where you're out there working on road and you don't have a flagger. What's that going to cost the taxpayers? It's going to cost me. It's going to cost. Been there and done that. And you're getting more traffic every day, and you're taking a chance every day. And whose hands are going to get slapped when you don't have that person out there directing traffic? That'd be me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, it's time. No. Well, Hyde Park, <coughs> and I actually called it confirmed with Ken Hyreville. Hyde Park always had five guys. Then they full time. Down, full time. Yes. Then they went down to four guys, but they had, Ken was saying they had two or three guys that they ran extra in the summertime to help out too. Yeah. So when did they? I think it was early 90s, I think, is when okay. they, I think. Or no, I think it's late 90s, or I think it was late 90s that day. I'm not 100%. Ken could probably tell me on the day. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, right. No, I'm curious why they decided to do that. That's probably the time they went to the strange how they count the hours for people because it looks as though you're saving money. Well, I think some of it was too when they went to tandems, they were able to cut back some of the smaller. I think that was part of it, but I'm not 100%. Because that's a prior mm -hmm. prior boards. Right. Well, no, I don't. They had, you know. I'm trying to think because they used to help us haul sand. Is this is this is this figured? We know the the union guys are coming up. Is that figured in here? What's that? Yes, yes. Okay, the increase is figured in here. So right, Ron. Yes. You said it was union. Yeah, yeah. The we're assuming that that fourth person slash well fourth union person is the new position that you're talking about. Yeah. So we would go from three union to four union if you do the fifth person. But but, but the, the existing the contract three... number is set for several years. Oh. Raise. Well, yeah, yeah, we're, we're raising the contract, Ron. Yeah, we're getting done. We're getting, believe it or not, we're getting close to renegotiation. But for twenty four, it's three percent fix for the highway crew. Okay. There's, there's no vote on it anyways, right? So we just we get to chew on this as yeah, the rest yeah. of them come in. Yeah. You're not yeah. chewing on it. I'm not chewing on it. No. <laughs> yeah, on. well, I, I, the only the only caveat to that comment, Matt, is the fifth person and that ninety thousand slash forty five thousand dollar increase affects a lot of other decision making. Um, so <clears throat> if the board was to say tonight that you're hundred percent committed then you make decisions like susan was saying on other departments right, right. You, that's what i'm saying that we, we don't even know what all these other budgets coming in that's why no I'm no saying. no yeah. no we're gonna this is like the call it the gross budget before yeah. you actually have to make decisions for sure yep and by the end of december you'll have your first look at what that overall percentage increase is uh once we get through Fire and ambulance should be here in December with Mary. That's all we have left, right? Fire and ambulance. 
Yeah, fire ambulance, outside agencies, and you know, groups like you know Mary that might want a few bucks for her program, that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not complaining. <laughs> okay. Well, we can move on. Thank you, Mark. Welcome. Do you have anything more you want to add before you step out? Or you want to hang out with us? Do you see this? Some of some of like we get FEMA projects, a lot of that comes back. That's I mean, that's the thing about this budget. You know, like these guys do the FEMA work, that money comes back. Well, but it doesn't that this part. The FEMA expenses are separate and it covers that extra part. Yeah. And you never know whether you're gonna have a disaster that's or not. <laughs> so we please have another profitable disaster. Okay. <laughs> Moving along. The regional municipal assessor LCPC agreement. We're adding that to the budget. Ron, looks like. Yeah, that will be in the administration budget. Uh, that's the number that we were tallying up the new cost minus the cost that were already in the budget. And I, I'm thinking we are down at um, 24,000 estimated cost minus the 11,000 that was already in the budget. Okay. So that'll be a 13,000 increase. Um, under admin, yeah. Okay. That uh, final approval is actually happening tonight at the Regional Planning Commission meeting. The right. three towns all signed a service agreement with the Regional Planning Commission, and now the Regional Board of Direct Directors is having a vote tonight to authorize uh, Tasha, who's the Executive Director, Tasha Wallace, to advertise the position. So we're hoping that uh you know december january uh, the position gets filled because we have immediate deadlines coming up for the grant list ron do you have off the top of your head just start i'm going backwards here do you have an idea what the highway reserve has in it no i don't have a good number on that i know that when we did our capital budgeting last meeting we had enough for Mike Mike's truck, which is going to be purchased this year, and then we started to run out of money for uh, Mark's truck next year, which is why we put the ARPA request on there to cover that expense. So that that helps the cash flow because of all the pieces of equipment that you all want to move to cash purchases, and having one item taken off with ARPA helps speed that up the current capital budget isn't funding the new grader so we have a planned five-year loan on that so the the answer is it's fluid it goes up and down and without the 175,000, which is uh, another ask later on in your budget you'll see capital appropriations <coughs> which is up i try to put it up on my screen if you look at the monitor um the 130,000 is in your current highway reserve. So that money will help this year, but next year, in order to get back to a cash purchase for equipment in the next four or five years, that number, that 175, uh, really needs to be around 250. And it's, it's not at 250. So we end up losing track, if you will, with inflation. And if you were to level fund that item, it really, it's, it almost would bind us to getting loans for equipment, which is what we had not been doing prior to the excavator. Sorry, I didn't mean to go backwards. Just learn. No, 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 I don't know. Good. Excuse me. Okay, possible state reappraisal order.
Is that it for highway? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was. Are you there? Yeah. Um, reappraisal letters, if you will, from the state of Vermont go out you know, in de in December. Yeah. Good night, Mark. Bye. Uh, they go out each December. Last year, we just barely cleared the uh, threshold for a notice of reappraisal. And the, the numbers haven't gotten better uh, in the sense that properties are selling well above a town assessment. So it, it may not mean much except for a little bit of a fight and it's a statewide issue. So I just want to get your, you know, just get you thinking about that. And I think they'll be issued before Christmas time, but maybe right about that time. So anyway, that's more of a, just a FYI that it's coming next month. Okay. Town audit. For 20. Yeah, the audit update, we're uh, just got an email from Glenna. She's down to her last number, which she found an error that we need to fix in some of our reports. So as far as I know, she's getting right down to the end of it. Uh, I, I don't want to guess at what time you'll have it, but we're definitely going to get the numbers, uh, audited numbers from her before you go to town meeting day publication. So part of, Matt, part of Matt's question, which deals with reserves and which deals with unassigned fund balance and what you put on the town uh, warning helps these numbers. So for example, if the audit comes up with some extra unassigned fund balance, you can go to voters and say, hey, do you want to allocate some of this excess savings account money that's above our 20% uh, retainage policy to you know, one or more projects? That's kind of the wild card that you have. So even though these numbers, you know, especially for highway at 20% are, are very large, we don't have that piece of the pie yet, which is uh, do we have some unassigned fund balance that could help get us through? We also have to make a final decision on ARPA money, which is available. And we also just submitted some, I think our last, we have three chunks of money coming in from our FEMA Halloween event. Uh, we got one chunk, which was 130,000 back in May. And this 160, 100, 160 is, just approved to come to us in the next two or three weeks that money goes back to the unassigned fund balance to refund those costs from the storm event and that becomes part of that 20 percent factor of what, what do you want to do with it so a couple wild cards out there even though these numbers are hard they're really just they're, they're really expense expense budget numbers we haven't dealt with the revenue side or moving money side which is you're going to have to do a lot of that work in january Okay. We have an action item for an ARPA project for the online zoning. I thought we already approved that. Uh, you approved the software probably back in mid-summer, late summer already. So you approved, a, a, it was about $1,500 to buy the software. We had an intern working with us on the records cleanup job. That position ended and it was slow going with, with intern. That was a community service type thing. Um, at, at this point, we're starting to get ready for the data upload part, which is a little more uh, sort of detailed work where we have to get good information loaded up into the software so that people can search online. Very, it'll be very similar to what people can do now for land records and deeds. So the proposal is to continue to work on that project and have Justin uh provide some hours per week to try to push that along and get into those records you know 100 percent through the arpa funds uh, to hopefully complete that project in the near future uh, it's a large project so it yeah. really depends on the it yeah, depends right. on, uh no i think probably what i'm gonna have to do with that is get started and sort of guess how fast it's gonna go if it's really fast it's less if it's really slow and monotonous it'll be more well, this, if this is an action item, what are we voting on? Because I'm not. Uh, gonna, you're, I'm, yep. I'm not open. I'm not open to voting on an open-ended ballot kind of thing. Yeah. Are, no, you're up to a certain amount. 
yeah, you can do that as a starter. You could say uh, allow uh, Justin to. It's like like a letter of hire almost as a as a particular position to work on the ARPA zoning database upload. Uh, not to exceed five thousand dollars or some number like that, and then we can revisit it. I think that that will get us a good start in it. And yeah, let's get started. If we can get finished to five thousand, I'd be psyched. But I don't. I just don't know what's ahead of us. That's why I can't give you a real hard number. <laughs> well, it's, it'd be better with Ted, right? <laughs> I was gonna say this is this is one more step to getting Justin to know a town more, anyways. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, okay. this thing, it includes a lot of the history stuff and trying to get used to people's names and places and all that business so that, you know, it, it's almost like a history project more than a zoning project. But uh, right now, the only thing that people have to come into the office for is zoning permit reviews. I'm doing something similar now in Albany. I'm indexing the town records all the way from, I've done 2006 forward. Now I'm going back to 91. Forward. Oh, wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, different. Different category, but yeah, same realm. Same thing, right? Okay. Well, I move that we use the ARPA funds um, up to five thousand dollars. So uh, to move this forward. Okay. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those staying. We're good. Yeah, uh, Matt. Good point. I should have thought of that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. That's what happens when you're in warm weather, you know. Right. Your mind gets crazy. <laughs> no, that's just my COVID from <laughs> last year. There's a report today about one of the biggest effects from COVID came out from some journal that I was perusing that had uh, memory as being one of the yeah. biggest issues. Huge. You're, you're also getting older, Ron. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't hurt that problem. <laughs> Hell, I <don't. laughs> So I've got the warrants in front of me. I didn't see a finance memo from Jen though. Did I miss that? I haven't seen. Okay. Well, she didn't you muted. Yeah, I think that was a holiday. Let's take this week off type okay. of thing and focus okay. on family yeah. stuff. And okay. okay. As long as you're good with the warrants, I think she's going to uh, take care of that part. Well, none of you have seen it. So we'll wait on those. Yeah, I haven't either. I, I so guess we'll I wait. can't vote on that yeah, yet. No, me either. So that we'll wait. So the minutes, did everyone have time to review? Oh. Yeah. No, we're going to look at them then. Oh, okay. Yeah. The minutes, did everybody look at the minutes from last meeting? <laughs> I know. I don't know. I, like I, nobody's I, answering me. I have to, I have to abstain. Oh, you weren't here. Were you? <laughs> did they not really uh, see huh? what happened? I did not read them yet. It was interesting. It was Sheriff's Department budget. I had a lot to read. I'm sorry, I missed. I was in Ohio. It was really interesting. Um, you, do you want to give me a quick recap? How much more was their budget percentage? 8%. 8%. Um, so we'll wait on the minutes too, it looks like. <laughs> so other business. December 7th, we need to be at the North Egg Park Fire Station at 7 p.m. for their budgets. Uh, FEMA mitigation project, Ron, you got anything to tell us about that? There's, uh, well, there's the two FEMA projects are running parallel. There's the there's the FEMA mitigation projects for Brook and Centerville that we have just about finished the bid documents and bid documents are under review. I sent them to highway and roll in to look at those. And then the town attorney is in the middle of getting the stormwater easements we need. Um, once the easements are secured, we'll put the ad out and, you know, soon, I'm, I'm talking under 60 days probably for all that and plan construction next summer i think there's a five week window for each of the culverts um proposed and we'll see if we can get one contractor to do both where is the one on the centerville road i guess i didn't understand where that one was that's just north of the housing you know before you get to um pear farm road there before you make the turn to cleveland corners 
you know, the, there's a fire hydrant um, right on the west side of Centerville, probably 600 feet north of, oh, I think it's, I'm sorry, I'm trying to think of the person's name. See the memory thing. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Pat, Patty Hayford's house, just, okay, just okay. north. Also just, Noise Farm. Yeah, no, just just south of Noise Farm Pear Farm. Oh, okay. okay, I know yeah, where it is. Oh, okay, I know what you're talking about. I thought they did that one. I did too. Kenny, Kenny did some work there years well, they, ago. They've done all kinds of work there. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's why I didn't no, think it was that one, but I knew where he is now. Yeah. Although, yeah, no, they they had two, I think two water main repairs there, yeah, plus yeah. the culvert, the culvert repair was patched. It had separated and tipped, and we just patched it to get the road okay, open again. Just patched. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I know where we are now. Yeah. The, third, the second project is the brick project, which we have a contract with uh, Dubois King to do a scoping study. So their people, their team has been out in the field doing survey marks and meeting with neighbors and at Wickham Island and the Green River culvert at Garfield Road, the, the big one that's uh, by Green River Dam Road. So if you see markings or hear noise about it, it's, it, it is a town project, but it's being managed by regional planning. Okay. What's the name of the first project? Sorry, I didn't hear. What's the name of the first project? Uh, the first project is FEMA mitigation projects. There's two of two sites that will be done by one contractor. As far you know, that's what the bid the bid documents are going out soon. The oh. second project is BRIC, B R I C, FEMA grant. And that's Wickham Island and the Gr Green River culvert. <clears throat> Whitcomb Island, does Whitcomb Island and Garfield? No. Yeah, Green Green River Culvert at uh, Garfield Road. Two Two. And the Sylvan Road stormwater reconstruction. Yeah, that one got delayed. We had funding issues with the Lamoille County Conservation District where they were, um, I think the, I think everybody's in, in shock at how, you know, cost estimates from 12 months ago are doubled now practically. So they wanted more information on why we, um, why that project went up so much. But uh, the committee, which is uh, Lamoille County Conservation District's funding people, Natural Resources Conservation Group, met last week and approved the modified budget. So that can go forward again. Uh, it'll be bid sometime over the winter for construction next year. Most of the town match is um, planned, well, half of the town match is supposed to be highway work to try to get that road in good condition. And then the other half will be cash and when that project's done or during that time, just before, or just after, we should have a discussion about discontinuing that road, which is non-compliant, serves three houses, and has been on the list for discussion for almost almost as long as I've been here, I think since 2015. Okay. Okay, and um, your email about our December meeting room, um, I like the idea of not meeting Christmas week. I don't know about anybody else, but. In terms of meeting twice, we're meeting every week this next month. Right. We're meeting twice next week, right? No, never. Well, we got to meet in the North High Park. No, that's following week. That's December. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Right. Still <laughs> twice that week. No, no. No, isn't no, the, no. the first Tuesday? Or, so it'd be Wednesday and then the following. You have something with us. Let me give you something. Let's just do them. Let's just be there. Then the following week. So the thirteenth is our meeting. So seven. What are you thinking, Ron? Meeting the week before Christmas, or not meeting at all? 
Yeah, it'd still be Tuesday. We just move it from the 27th to the 20th. So you meet, you'll meet on 7th if you go up to North Hyde Park, and then you'll meet 13 and 20 at this meeting. Right, because we're going to really need to meet for the budget, right? We should yeah, have we'll be, all numbers by then. Yeah, the 20th, you'll see your first full budget. So it's kind of a, it's a good time to start to figure out what the heck we're going to do on the revenue side. Right. Okay. Is that Pay for some money? Is that good for everybody to do that? Good for me. Yeah. <clears throat> it's better than what you said the week before. So change it from the 27th to the 20th? Yeah. Okay. Sounds like we're all good with that, Ron. Okay, thank you. I'll just make the changes. I think uh, Justin was okay with that if it happened. So I think we're good to go. Okay. Same time. Same time, same place. Okay. Okay. Has everybody had time to review? Oh, Matt, you see the Lawrence? Yeah, you guys missed one. Oh, I yeah, we said that one. Yeah, yeah, we set a couple down early. Anything else, guys? They don't like stuff. Have, have, have anything else to discuss? No, wait a minute. That mask on stand? Yeah. What? You can forge your signature. Forge your signature. You can if you want. <laughs> when the rec committee gives back all the money, they say they have too much. Right. What's that? You say when the rec committee sends in a memo that says they have too much money, you're giving it back. <laughs> People would know that wasn't your thing. <laughs> Okay. Uh, have we? Has there been any movement on the travel pit, Minash? Have we? Have there been any conversations? No, I wasn't. Zay. No, I didn't. See? I said that. Brian. Brian set up and said he's been having the conversation with him. Remember, I said that last week. You didn't even know it, but you were elected. Yeah, <laughs> and you looked at Ken and said, I think we can do that. Oh, I said, uh, Matt ain't getting into that one. I can see that. We got to review the minutes. A hundred percent. And they said, has, has there been a liaison on this? And then Brian said, yes, but then. And Brian said, I can follow up. I don't yeah. What do you mean, Brian? She wasn't here. Oh, you weren't. Yeah. Yeah, she was. Oh, oh she did the Yeah, because it, it's, yeah, yeah. But no, well, we had that. We had that. I did by calling week. Ken for the record twice. Yeah, uh, it says Matt will work with Ken regarding the Manas land project and bring back more information. I thought so. Okay. <laughs> Who did the meeting minutes? You? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I told you you were elected. Do you, uh, do, do you, okay, would you, you rather not do that, Matt? I don't care. It doesn't matter. I'll, I'll, I tried calling Ken twice, but I, I will call him again. Yeah. Because I mean, I'll I think I'll do it if you don't want to. I think it's kind of nominated. But the, I, think it was I, I don't mind that. It, it, I, I don't mind with the Ken and the conversation. It's the conversation with Howard Minaj. I don't, no, I, that yeah. that was that was the portion that I think Brian was supposed to go back to. Yes, okay. we were getting more information. Okay. Yeah. I have just for the record read through all the paperwork that Ken gave us. <laughs> Did, did you guys? Yes. And I got it right here. And it still states that there's 99 years. That well, was, I did see that. Yeah. That was. There's 100 years. That's yeah. what it was right there. That's what was proposed to the town in. 90. But we don't know how many yards that has been taken out of there every year. Right, Rob? Because I asked Mark and I asked him how many yards we put up in sand this year. I also yeah, Mark, Mark has an annual report that he gives me um, for the USGS that we report out. It's been running 10, 10 or so. 10 or so? Yeah, 10 or 10. In here, 10 cubic. In here, I know I read it, it said somewhere around 20. 20. Yeah. It was here. a proposal. Yeah. yeah. And if we've been doing 10, that adds on another 100 years. Well, right. 100 and years, I, right. I did speak with Mark. It's yeah, well, you're right. I did. I did speak with Mark on on. He was saying, you know, on his 
his felt feel is that the, the pit doesn't have the gravel source. Right. Um, but there's no guarantee that this new pit will have the gravel source. So, well, and I'd say, see, everybody's so locked into that being a pit and I'm not locked into. I know. I, and that's what, that's what the conversation in the beginning, because I wasn't on the pass board. So that's why when this came out, it, Again, I will follow up with Ken still. I'll, I'll do my diligence. Right. And um, yeah. Just, I'd like people to let go of it. has to be a pit. <laughs> but that's not that's not what the town representative people that were here the other day, they were, they're concerned that that is going to be a pit. And right. that's my well, concern. Determined that it'd be a pit. That's what they want us to reconsider. And, right. and, and that's my issue with going forward with this is I don't really feel we'll ever get it permitted as a pit. Based on what I've done in the recent with my work, I don't think it's that will try. So, but uh, open conversation. Well, you, I'll, 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 it is a, it's a, is the purchase of a piece of property, not as a gravel pit, is a different conversation than a gravel pit. And which is what I've always tried to get people away from to be able to think bigger than gravel pits. But isn't that what we presented to the voters? No, no. No, there are people yeah. who are a gravel pit, gravel pit, but lots of people I talked to said, first of all, we can't do anything. Nobody would guess it. you can't do anything for 25 years. Right. Who who knows in 10 years what you need? You know, and if we can buy that. Why why what what's this what's the specs, specs? Why is it we can't do nothing with it for is it Act 250? No, yeah, the Act 250 leans on it when Howard got permits for other things. He locked that. There's an agricultural hold on it. Right. Prime ag. Active 50. So, what's the taxes on that a year now? I brought this up the other day. It's like 2100 or something. Oh, yeah. Just because it's prime A. But... We're going to renegotiate. I, yeah, I, we'll I'll follow up with Ken. I, just, I, I guess I missed the. I guess I missed that. I, I did call him though on my uh, defense. We did, yeah. Uh, so, I, I will do my diligence. <laughs> Ron, there's been no movement on your end. No, it's all been quiet, waiting for more direction. Okay. Okay. Did everybody have time to look at the warrants? Yep. So you want to make a motion for those? No more down here. Um, I move we accept the warrants. Do I have a second? Yeah. <clears throat> second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And the minutes. Are we just going to not just, move those because yeah, we'll just write them? the next one, right? Okay, <laughs> we're going to defer that one. <laughs> what about the same thing for Ryan? Jim Harrison. What's that? Oh, he just he couldn't make the meeting tonight, so I think we're postponing that too. Okay. Okay. No, I just. Let me let me reread that email before we adjourn because <laughs> now you've got me thinking. Uh, hey, Ron, are you there? Yeah. Can we work on uh, getting my email linked to my phone? I I don't receive the the I don't know if the iPad needs an update or something, but even in yeah, case, if that were if that works, I mean if that's gonna it's definitely gonna help. Uh, I, it really is helpful for me, but if you wanted to get, um, are you on an iPhone or Android or what? iPhone. Yeah, I'll send. I'll send you some instructions and then see. I, it's really just a few buttons you got to push. But I'll, uh, yeah, I'll send. And, and some password stuff. I think that I don't have. Uh, yeah, so I can. I can get all that to you. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um. So. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys saw Brian's email today from Jim Harrison. Um, he was going to come to the meeting tonight, but he could not make it. Jim Harrison was Yep. Called? And he said there's only five feet. He had crossed through the map, only five feet on the Hyde Park side. Also, the power company is to change our three phase power over to East Side. And if town ever needs that power, no problem for you folks to hook onto it, just so you know. We'll be dropping off Matt, Matt the next time I'm up. What's this one referring to? The um, Harrison Gravel Pit. They're looking to add a power source, a power drop? Is Must that be. Ron, do you have any more insight on that other than that screenshot? No, 
No, that's the first time I heard it. The only thing I could think of is move, he's moving the, the phase three out of the way for the gravel removal, but I didn't, I don't remember talking about it during the DRB or needing town right away or anything like that. What, what's the deal with the berm? Well, he was, he was considering going back through the permit process to add removal of the berm between the town property and his property for the material that's in there. Um, it was a condition of Act 250 to keep it. And I think he looked at it in more detail with his engineer and figured out it wasn't worth the trouble. So that went away. Yeah, that proposal to amend permits went away. I think he was half considering adding it to the Act 250 application that he's going, he has to go back to 250 now. I think he was going to add it, but I think he he just withdrew it based on that email or text. He'll probably wait a couple of years. I would. <laughs> and just so everybody knows, Kim is going to be out six to eight weeks longer than expected. I think that may be her expected. I think probably her physicians expected that right along. <clears throat> but she's doing okay. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Motion to adjourn. The moves. Second. Okay, have a great Thanksgiving. Yeah.